I'd like to talk to you about the use now of the verticut cartridge. And the verticut cartridge is this one. Uh, these are driven star-shaped blades which cut into the grass sward. I always call this my second favourite uh, cultivation, cultivation cartridge. Uh, it shouldn't really be called that, um, but the Scarifier cartridge with the spring tines is such a versatile uh, cartridge doing everything. Um, but the Verticut cartridge does something that the uh, that the Scarifier cartridge doesn't do. The Scarifier cartridge is very gentle and fetches out the loose material. But if I really want to sort my thatch out, then I need to start to cut into it. And these solid um, spring steel blades will spin at high speed and effectively saw a slot. And as you move forward, you then have a continuous slot through the thatch, which is helping the drainage. And by drainage, I mean that if I can create a slot through the thatch, then again, what I'll do is let the water get through the thatch, get through to the soil. It will go down in the soil and the roots will naturally chase uh, that, that moisture uh, and the nutrients that are down below. Uh, by sawing a, a slot as, as well, um, I actually have to remove the material that I cut into that slot and these blades will throw the material well into the grass box. Uh, that it, the material that it actually removes from that slot. So we are reducing thatch as well, but it's also allowing the air to get into the thatch. And like with the compost heap, getting air into the compost heap makes that break down as well aerobically. So otherwise it, 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 um, it can cause problems if that thatch layer becomes a rotting compost heap rather than one that's breaking down um, into something that is probably more useful to the plant itself. So the questions we get asked about this is, how often should we use it? Again, it's pretty gentle, uh, but that depends on how deep you set it. So in the sterling, this verticut will actually cut at minus 10. So we can actually achieve quite some depth with this. I like that from, uh, from the point of view of overseeding. So if I was going to be overseeding, particularly in a, a ryegrass sward for a springtime uh, seeding, then by cutting in, uh, it does allow the space that when I then broadcast seed that I've got a real opportunity to get the seed to touch soil and I need it to do that so that it can start to absorb moisture and start its germination journey. Uh, and by cutting in deeper then I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get more seed deeper uh, which, which is a better place for it to be down at 10 millimetres rather than just sitting on the surface where the birds can pick up the seed. Uh, the other thing that it does, and a lot of people are using it for this, is that when you have the flat growing weed grasses, that we're trying to create an environment, it's very difficult to kill those grasses, but we are trying to create an environment where they have a less competitive advantage. The grasses we want, the fescues, the bents, the rye grasses, generally are growing upright. And then as the blade passes through, it doesn't do anywhere near any damage to those plants. You will find a few of those plants in the grass box, but really it's not very many, it's mainly thatch. But the grasses that are growing flat from a crown, uh, the annual meadow grass in particular, uh, but also the Yorkshire fog, they really don't enjoy having a good verticutting. It's cutting their leaves off, it's exposing the soil around the plant, and it gives the opportunity for the grasses that we really want to fill those gaps and give them that competitive advantage that we're trying to create. So a regular treatment with the verticut, not necessarily going so deep, you can raise it up a bit so it just gets the grass plants, will help in the control of those weed grasses and other broadleaf weeds as well. If you're, if you're reluctant to use chemicals on those broadleaf weeds, it will help with that too. So a great tool for all of those things. Gentle, how deep should you go? Just go as deep as necessary, start off high, if you want to create better results uh, and go deeper into the thatch because it's thatch reduction, go to the 10 millimetres. Just be careful how much damage you're doing to the grass and try and it definitely has to be optimal growing conditions. Lots of water and make sure that you fertilise directly afterwards as well so the plant's got the maximum advantage to be able to recover from the stress situation that you've just put it into. Um, 
Speed of use, again, I would use the Sterling lower speeds for this as well and give the blades a really good chance to cut in, but also to remove the material from the slot so the slots stay open for longer. You will see the lines when you're working deeper uh, that this creates. So you're not going to do this before your show day of your lawn if you have a party or something like that because you will see the lines. But set it shallow and you can hardly see where the lines have been at all. Great for standing the grasses, long grasses upright and just before mowing. So a question we're commonly asked as well is, do you use the verticut before or after mowing? I'm going to be very prescribed about that. If you verticut first, then when you mow afterwards, you clean up the sward, but you also catch the long grasses that you didn't get before uh, because they're now standing upright. So verticut first and you get the advantage of getting, getting the actual long grasses. Uh, if you mow first, then verticut after, then you get cleaner slots and uh, um, you can get that material into the grass box easily because the, gra the long grass isn't holding back the, the uprisings going into the grass box. So you could, do, you could do this several ways. If you have a lot of time, you can uh, uh, mow verticut and then mow again. But uh, I would suggest if you mix it around so that uh, on alternate weeks, you might verticut first and then mow and then switch it around so that you mow and then verticut in the next week. And that way you, you gather all the advantages. It really depends on how much time you have available. So let's get this into the uh, machine and uh, let's have a look at what that does and see what comes out of the turf. show you what those blades look like. So you can see here, this is the material that's come out from the verticut. And you'll notice compared with the scarab fire, which really just brings out the loose brown material, whether it be moss or thatch, this is pulling a few plants out as well. And that thinning process gives the plants the space to be able to breathe. If you're looking at the slot itself, especially in the sterling where we can go 10 millimeters deep, then you're really getting a very significant slot into the thatch, allowing that to breathe and also get the, the, um, the CO2 exchanges in the soil. This extra depth that we're gaining now with the sterling, with the verticut at these sort of depths, really does create a great environment for grass seed to be able to germinate in a much better situation than if it was just on the surface itself. And of course it does keep it away from the birds too. <laughs> 